Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, y'all. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadid. Um, I wanted to share uh, this article with you from the rap. And it states that Nick Cannon demands full ownership of Wild and Out an apology from Viacom CBS. Now, a lot of people took offense with Nick Cannon also saying that the, the corporation wants to put the young Negro in his place by firing him. Okay? So, now, uh, some of these corporations are really, really having a hard time with hearing how we really feel. It's not like we have not felt this way for a long time. I mean, we've had our scholars, like uh, I heard uh, Brother ben, uh, Zoe Williams say on his show the other day. Uh, we've had these scholars like Ivan Van Sertema, Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, uh, Bobby Hemmett, um, Phil Valentine, for that matter. Um, I mean, um, Chancellor Williams. Uh, I mean, at the point I'm trying to make is we've been privy to our information about who we really are for quite some time. Especially when the scholars begin to teach us. Now, the thing about it is y'all didn't know we knew that. Just like a lot of uh, uh, oppressors didn't know that the slave could read. And then when they found out, oh my God, they beat them. But because they didn't know English, listen, without sounding cynical, but as a person that knows history, the truth of the matter is we gave literature, mathematics, science, arts, and everything to the world. So when y'all look at us as the people who knew nothing, being the first children of the universe means we gave everything to all civilization. And that's why y'all think I'm trying to be funny when I say honor your mother and father that your days may be long. We are all part of the human family, but somebody had to be first. Somebody had to be born first, right? Just like in your family. Now, mama don't have all her kids at one time. Even if she have twins, one come out first, right? All right. Not saying that one twin is better than the other twin, but one comes out first. Right? Okay. So with that being said, just kind of calm your nerves a little bit. Because I hear a lot of people being very upset and claiming Nick Cannon is a racist, and, but they don't really know history. And it was Brother Malcolm that said, of all our studies, it is history that best rewards our research. It's history. Y'all got to understand that. Because if you know history, then you'll know how the stuff got the way it is now. And it's all unraveling. You can ask the Native American. You can ask everybody. We haven't been, we've been playing dumb, but we ain't been dumb. We've had to play dumb because we knew y'all was going to have a tantrum. And then what do you do when you have a tantrum? Oh, my God. You send out the water hoses. You send out the dogs. You send out the cattle prods. You send out the lynch mob. You send out the AK-4. You send out the night Riders. You send out the KKK. All those things. When we tell y'all the truth. And this is going on long enough. We have a truth that is our own. That we're telling you about. You think we want to keep regurgitating what you have to say about us and never giving us the opportunity to speak out hypocritically about what we feel about you and what we know to be true about history, being the original people on the planet? This is not uh, no kind of supremacist talk. This is history. Read. This society has done a very good job of dummying all of y'all down. More specifically, white folks. History has done a very good job. And the powers that be, like the Andrew Jacksons and the 
uh, Thomas Jefferson's and the George Washington. These educators have done, and, and warmongers, and people that have been controlled have done a very good job of keeping y'all dumb. So really, if you really want to know the truth about how we got here, to all my friends who don't get it, the ones who get it, get it. And I know that they there. They like the John Brown. You understand what I'm saying? They get it. They know what's up. The point I'm trying to make is Nick Cannon made an apology. But he's also demanding full ownership of Wild and Out, which is his creation. Well, y'all know what happened to Michael when he got his stuff, when they found out that the little Negro was behind all that. Michael ended up dead. They, um, he was castrated first in the court systems, and that didn't do the job, so eventually he was taken out. Yes, by his own device, from being addicted to drugs that he got uh, hooked on um, when he got burned up doing a Pepsi commercial. However, that's neither here nor there. At the end of the day, what he thought was living the glamorous life and the free life was really the trap to kill him. The trap to get all his music back, the trap to take the money because he can give it to those kids um, and make sure that the phenotype Jacksons, and y'all know what I mean, will never re reap the residuals of what they started with their baby brother. Well, they one of their baby brothers. The Jackson 5, he was the baby brother. So I don't want to get ahead of myself, but Fired Viacom TV personality Nick Cannon is demanding full ownership of Wild and Out, which he referred to as a billion-dollar brand. He also wants an apology. Cannon, who was let go on Tuesday for Cannon's Class podcast episode that Viacom said promoted hateful speech and spread anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, pushed back in a lengthy Facebook post on Wednesday. Cannon said he reached out to Sherry Redstone, who controls Viacom CBS, through her National Amusement Inc. company to have a conversation of reconciliation and actually apologize if he said anything that pained or hurt her community. He received dead silence in return. That's when I realized that they don't want a conversation or growth. They want to put the young Negro in his place, Cannon wrote. It is absolutely untrue that Nick Cannon reached out to the chair of Viacom, both the representative Viacom CBS and a spokesperson for Redstone said in a statement to the rap Wednesday. When asked if Cannon had attempted to reach Redstone through intermediaries, both the Viacom rep and Redstone's rep said, not to my knowledge. Mm-hmm. 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 Cannon said that Viacom CBS is now on the wrong side of history and made an unwise and, un and a divisive decision to fire him, adding that the company put out a flat lie in Tuesday night's statement about his firing, saying that I didn't attempt to reconcile the situation when on two separate occasions I specifically acknowledged and openly requested a form to be corrected. Representatives of Viacom CBS declined the rap's request for comment on the, uh, Cannon's claims he was twice acknowledged for openly requesting a form to be corrected. Cannon also accused Viacom of banning advertisements that supported George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Oh, but a spokesperson for Viacom told the rap that they believe that Cannon was referring to a Wall Street Journal story published July 12th, claiming that MTV had requested that his ads be, I mean, not be placed alongside stories that were related to George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, or the Black Lives Movement. Uh, uh, due to the comedic nature of the show, we believe it is in question, um, uh, a revenge prank 
We didn't want to be insensitive by placing ads for the next important and serious topics, such as Black Lives Matter. Like I said, y'all, they think we're stupid. They, think they really think that they can keep lying, gaslighting, gaslighting, gaslighting. Y'all remember now, this is what the country was built on, collective narcissism. Whole lock, stock, and barrel. They just lie, lie, lie. The press is the biggest liars that was ever created. They're the biggest flying monkey out of the whole ring. Um. So now they claim that the reason why they took the, the uh, they don't want those uh, uh, commercials playing is because the uh, other stuff is such serious nature that we don't want to top it off with that. But Candace says that with Wild and Out, the improv comedy show that he created in 2005 and has hosted since, he created a billion-dollar brand that expanded across multi-empire and is still Viacom's biggest digital brand, touring business, talent discovery, and incubation system, and successfully restaurant franchise. Based on trust and empty promises, my ownership was swindled away. And for Viacom to be so deceptive is no surprise. They have been mistreating and robbing our community for years. Underpaying the talent on their biggest brands like Love and Hip Hop, all the BET program, and of course, Wild and Out. Well, you know, I keep telling y'all. Being programmed for black people is not the same thing as being owned by black people. And of course, now Wild and Out. Cannon added that he does not blame any individual. And they know that. If for, in, for in, individual white people think that they, that they got that much power and it's them. I mean, they're on some ego trip. This is systemic racism. And this is what the world is built on. And was subject in what I was attempting to highlight. In one of my clips, um, I if I have furthered the hate speech, I wholeheartedly apologize. But now I am the one making demands. I demand full ownership of my billion dollar wild and out brand that I created, and they will continue to misuse and destroy without my leadership. I demand that the hate and backdoor bullying cease while we're at it. And now that the truth is out. But while we at it, I demand apology. All right. Of course, y'all all know Cannon's firing came because of comments he made during a June episode of one of his podcast series of Cannon's Class, in which he interviewed former Public Enemy member Richard Professor Griff, who himself was fired from the group for making anti-Semitic comments. Um, you know, it's, and it's, and it's, um, it's really amazing to me when you look on YouTube and you can see all types of videos about how, uh, um, pretty much the world banking system created in the bank of, uh, London or, uh, banking families, the Bilderbergers and the Wahlbergs. It's amazing to me that y'all putting all that on, um, Him, Nick Cannon. Next, you'll be putting the town mood on him, and the learned elders of Zion on him. Is that what we doing next? The protocols, we blaming him for that as well. Um, I mean, it's really sad, but the letter that Nick wrote was more moving to me, and I think I will end this with that. 